So in the video before this one, I compared cutscenes, um, good versus bad. And now I'm going to be showing you how to make a good cutscene, at least in my opinion. Before I show you the scene that we're going to be making though, I want to explain a little bit about what happened to lead up to this point, at least in the imaginative form, because it didn't actually happen. So basically, Harold and Therese needed an item that was located in the kingdom. Uh, when they got there, they became friends with the princess and everything, but the king refused to give them the item that they needed. But people's lives depend on this item. It's a type of gem uh, that holds great power or something. Something mysterious and RPG-like. So anyway, they thought about it and they had to betray the princess by stealing from the kingdom. And uh, so they did, and they didn't think that anyone was on their trail, but the princess was. And that's where this cutscene starts.
Okay, so if you're gonna be doing the same style of cutscenes that I'm doing, then you're gonna want to open up uh, an art program like the GIMP, and you're gonna wanna import a battler graphic, and then kind of crop out little emotes and then save them into your pictures folder, uh, because that's what we're gonna be using to kind of create that little emote symbol that shows up uh, at the bottom right. So you're gonna make various emotes, and uh, to use them, all you really have to do is show picture. Now, depending on which RPG Maker you're using, um, the locations will be very different, obviously. But for the most part, just once you get the position right, then um, it should be pretty simple after that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to slide the picture a little bit to kind of give it that opening animation. And what I usually do is I start the transparency at 150 and slide it into 255, the opacity. Afterwards, I show the text, which, by the way, if you don't understand the symbols that you see here, uh, don't worry. All you have to do is hover over the part where you can input text and don't move your mouse for a second. And you should see a little pop-up window explaining what all the symbols that you see here do. And then when you're done with your text, just make the little picture slide to the right a hair bit and make its opacity zero. Now, it's kind of important to add pauses in your text um, to kind of express the delay uh, that the of the characters talking, as that kind of helps you imagine the scene a little bit better. As for the cinematic effect, I, I generally like to kind of have little camera movements, and I feel, I feel like that adds to the excitement of the scene, I guess. Now, you'll notice that this cutscene wasn't all directly serious. Um, it started to kind of feel serious when the princess caught up to them, but when she jumps down, it's a bit of a rough landing, so, you know, I added, like, a little comedic sound effect with, like, this little shaking for, like, a half second of the screen, or for about one second, and then she pauses and she's like, owie, like, that hurt. Um, so adding comedic relief into your scenes will keep the player from being bored. I'm not saying, like, do that with every scene because that would be bad, <laughs> but for some of your scenes, um, if it's not too directly serious, then go ahead and add some comedic relief like that right there. Now as for the characters moving around and everything during the text, that can be achieved by using a simple little trick, which is setting the move route but not waiting for completion, and instead using wait timers. Now you can also use the wait inside of the, um, the set move route to kind of delay a little bit when the other character takes action, that way they're not moving in complete unison. That's also important. Because otherwise, it's just going to look like, oh, they moved and stopped at the exact same time. You don't you don't want that. I also made it look like Harold was a little bit bored. Um, when, she, when she was about to tell the story, he kind of walked around for a little bit and then came back up behind her. And I feel like it's important to continuously express the emotion of your characters. Like, don't let them kind of drift into, I guess, roboticism is a term that I can use for that. Uh, don't let them drift into nothing. Like, keep their character alive. Um, and one way to do this is you've seen how, like, when Therese kind of pushed him back a little bit so she could talk, and how he got a little bit pissed at that, like he walked off and he got a little angry mark for it. Um, that's that's kind of like what I mean by keeping your characters alive, because you know if if, if he would have gotten shoved back and just stood there, it, it would have looked kind of dull in my opinion. If you're confused at all on how I've done any of these effects, in the description below, I actually linked this project with only this cutscene in it. So you can kind of explore how it works. And I've also commented uh, on the basics, at least, of it. But um, yeah, you can see how the entire event works, basically. Now, at the ending there, you've seen how he was, like, really excited and everything. And um, poor Therese, she was, like, all just crushed because she didn't, she couldn't say no because Harold wanted her in the party. And she wasn't going to leave anyway because she was just going to follow and then I can put her in danger. So Therese was, like, kind of stuck in this situation of acceptance like she had no other choice but to accept that's another example of kind of keeping your characters alive especially where uh right before it fades out how she just kind of like falls down she's like she's like as if like to represent that she just she's given up you know at this point she's just like ah whatever i'm not gonna win this argument anyway but um yeah i hope this video has helped you guys kind of learn how to create interesting cutscenes. Um, it's a little bit more in-depth than the comparison video that I did, but that's gonna be it. Bye, guys!